Hi, I'm Allie with Infragistics. Today we're going to show you how to implement a data-driven testing scenario with Windows Forms Test Automation with HP Unified Functional Testing. We'll be using HP's Excel-like data pane to iterate through multiple test cases while reusing the same base code. We're going to start by creating a reusable action. Right-click anywhere on the script and select the menu Action and Call to Action. It will open a dialog to help define the action. Here, we will give it a name and select Execute after current step, then click OK. Next, we'll add data to the test case. We'll start by clicking Open the Data tab and selecting the Sub Data tab specific to the new action. Next, I'm going to paste in my data for this test and give my data columns names by double-clicking on the column header and giving them names in the dialog. Next, we're going to click Record. UFT will open the application we're testing, and we will click in each of the UI controls that we are going to be interacting with for this test case. Then let's click Stop Recording. We did this so that the controls will be added to the UFT's object repository and give us the IDs so we can hand script with them. From those actions, we'll be removing the action name and using the set statement to create shorter, more readable object names to script with. Now let's create a variable that will access the value from the row column by using the data table method. We'll need to state the DT local sheet to let UFT know which data sheet to pull the data from. Now, with those objects set and the row variable defined, we can quickly hand script very readable actions. Let's activate the row and set some cell values to data that will be pulled from the data tab. Now we'll go back to the root action and change the default setting of one iteration to all iterations. This tells UFT that when this run action is called, instead of just running it once, it will run it once for each row in its corresponding data table from the data tab. We can now click back to our sub action and start writing some tests. Again, we will start by predefining some variables that we will use more than once to make the final script more readable. Here, we're using the cint method to cast the expression supplied into an integer. It's good practice when doing comparisons to ensure that the data you are comparing is of the same data type, or else it may stop unexpectedly with an error. The two variables we're defining now correspond to the actual data pulled from the cell in UI Grid and the data test from the data table from the data tab. With the two variables defined, we'll write a simple if-then comparison of the two values. If the actual value doesn't match the table value, we'll use the reporter object to report an event to run the results viewer telling it that this iteration failed. We will add a meaningful message and some details so that when we see it in the results viewer, we'll better understand what went wrong. Here, I'm just pasting in a very similar test, but this one is using the getNA property method to get the value property from the meet total value editor. This one is using the cdbl method to cast the values to the double data type, but other than that, it's identical to the previous test. Now let's add one final test and make it a verification point. So let's start recording. Once the application is open, we're going to go to the design menu and select from the checkpoint submenu, standard checkpoint. It will switch to the hand cursor so that we may select which UI control we want to use for the verification point. It will ask to confirm the control and then we can scroll down and select the text property. We're going to configure it to be a parameter and define it further with the parameter options button. From this dialog, we'll select the current action sheet, then select the column that we'll be using for comparison and click OK. With that done, we can click Stop Recording and start playing our test. As the script is running, we can see it step through each line of code and changing the value of cells as it goes along. With the script complete, we're going to open the Run Results viewer. And here you can see by the green check marks that it passed. There's a line for each iteration that it went through in the data. Now let's close the Run Results viewer. With the positive test case working, it's now time to intentionally break things. Let's change one of the data values from the data tab. By testing this break, we can verify that our tests are all working correctly. So now let's start the tests up and see what happens. With the script complete, let's open the results viewer and check the results. Here we can see from the red markers that it failed. 
Since we changed the value in the second row, the first iteration passed all the way through. But starting with the second iteration, you can see the red failed markers, and you can also see the message and details that we put into our script. That means our tests are working correctly, and we're good to go. And there you have it. In just a few minutes, we successfully implemented a data-driven testing scenario with Windows Forms test automation with HP Unified Functional Testing. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all the latest news and videos from Infragistics, and we'll see you next time.